The history of Zazobra is very interesting. It sort of begins in 1924 when a group of artists here in this city began the art community that uh, blossomed into what it is today. They were a uh, different kind of artist that had come from the East and they all sort of arrived in 1921 and in 1924 they decided that the historical fiesta needed a little more punch, a little more excitement to kick it off. They were a little tired of the boring fiesta that they thought it had become. So. They got together and came up with the idea of burning an effigy. And chief among them was the artist Will Schuster, who had just arrived from Philadelphia three years prior. Uh, he had been given a death sentence leaving Philadelphia, having been a, uh, diagnosed a lunger in uh, Philadelphia by his doctors. He had been gassed in the trenches of uh, France during World War I, about two years prior to that, and wasn't given much of a, of a chance being called the lunger. So his doctor said, go out west. If you go out west, you have a chance to die of old age or bad whiskey or both. So he took that chance and with his wife, he came out to Santa Fe, New Mexico on his way to Taos, I think was his ultimate destination I've heard. And he ended up in the city different and just fell in love with the place. And there were the other artists, the other four artists that he got to be friends with, who in the next five years from 1921 to 1926, became Los Cinco's, the five, the five painters, or as they were affectionately called in the city, the five little nuts and the five adobe huts, because they all built little adobe houses, and not very well on the Camino del Montesol. And he came here uh, with these artists, and uh, every day he'd go out for a little more of a walk, head over to Sun Mountain, or up to where the present day St. John's College is, and he'd figure, well, one day I'll die on my walk because of my bad lungs. But as he proceeded through this whole thing, he found out that he was, not, uh, he was not dying anymore. In fact, his health was rejuvenated in this high desert air. So he really enjoyed his time here, and before you knew it, his uh, lung problems were gone. They did haunt him later on in life, but Will Schuster was able to uh, keep going with this, this amazing art community that he had become a part of. So in 1924, to kick off this fiesta I was telling you about, they decided to burn an effigy. Someone had been down in Mexico and had seen the burning of Judas and thought that that was a great idea. Uh, someone else had been to the Caribbean and seen where they had burned some other little small boats and cast them out into the, the uh, sunset. And of course they had known about Wicker Man and other kinds of effigies around the world that had been burned for 4,000 years or so. So they thought they'd build a, an effigy. And one of the things that they decided to do was to get together, build an effigy and burn it. And Will Schuster got with one of his friends whose name was Gustav Baumann, a famous puppeteer and etcher. And Gustav Baumann built the first head and Schuster built the first body, only they didn't quite get together on the scale. So it ended up being this gigantic body and a little pinhead they called it. In 1924, they burned what was affectionately to be called Old Man Groucher or Old Man Depression for the times. And uh, 1925, again in a backyard burning in some party, they burned another old man groucher, old man depression. In 1926, the city fathers, uh, ha those having to do with the Fiesta Council and the, perpetration, uh, the perpetuation of the Las Fiestas de Santa Fe, thought, you know, that really, that really cool thing you do in your backyard, would you mind doing that for us? And they asked him formally if he would burn that effigy. So together with E. Dana Johnson, the editor of the Santa Fe New Mexican, they decided they needed a better name for Old Man Groucher. And E. Dana Johnson had seen in the back of an old Spanish-Mexican dictionary uh, a word at the end with a Z on the end of it that kind of summed it up. And so turning to the last page, he showed it to Will Schuster and there was that word, zozobra, anguish, anxiety, gloom, the gloomy one. Old Man Groucher became Old Man Gloom and he had his name and the first uh, record of that in the, in the Santa Fe New Mexican shows up the night after it was burned somewhere in a lot off Nussbaum Street near where the present day Santa Fe Reporter and the new library is was an open field and that first Zobra was burned there and interestingly enough that first ceremony included Kiwanians Kiwanians from the Club of Santa Fe that had just started their club in 1921 same year Schuster got there another interesting coincidence and uh, the first Zobra is described as uh, the gloomy figure in this lot surrounded by uh, bonfires that were lit. 
and there was somebody measuring doleful sounds on a gong and the the absent uh, mayor was filled in for by the sheriff Isidoro Armijo who came up to Zazobra very formally and read the charges against him for being gloomy and for ruining everyone's lives and without any further ado he pulled his sidearm from his belt and he fired a number of shots into this effigy <laughs> I think he emptied his revolver is what I've heard and was then surrounded by these hooded cloaked figures who were the death sentencers and someone put a match to him and he started into flames and burst with the fireworks that they had for him at that point and these cloaks were thrown off and underneath the cloaks festively dressed and gaily dressed for the air they said were the Kiwanians that had come to help put him away and so that first Zobra was how it went down in 1926 27, 28, 29, 30 we don't really have record of that and sometime in the 30s they came out here to Fort Marcy Park where these stairs were built as part of the WPA work projects Madrid Ballpark was built at the same time that uh, Fort Marcy was built these weren't on the blueprints but here they sit and here they stay and we think 37 or 39 the first Zobras were burned at Fort Marcy Park. For many people, Will Schuster's Zobra represents so many different things and every year I get to find out what those things are. For instance, this year a, a wedding dress has been shipped from Katrina, a hurricane person in Louisiana who has wanted to put this wedding dress in for a couple of years but the hurricane stopped her and uh, she shipped him to me, FedEx and we're going to put this, this $3,000 hand stitched wedding dress into Zobra. She wants her gloom burned away. Uh, the school children that come out to the park on the day we put the effigy on this pole will write down their glooms on little pieces of paper and scribble down their thoughts and we'll put those in. For others in Santa Fe they'll write their glooms down privately and they'll come to the crowd and to the the crowd that masses here on the night of the event and they'll bring their glooms and personally they'll have some way that they do it where they cast off their gloom. For a lot of people it's a new year for me, it's almost my New Year's because I, I go about 362 days a year on this thing and I give my birthday, Christmas, and maybe the one day off I don't think about it. And it is a new year. It starts the winter. It starts the end of the season. And so for many people, it means different things. Uh, for the Kiwanis Club of Santa Fe, it represents uh, an opportunity to raise money for the community, for children. Kiwanis International, of which we are a part of, I'm a Kiwanian, they have a mission making a difference one child at a time and Zazobra for since 1964 when Will Schuster gave it to the Kiwanis Club of Santa Fe and then in 72 when the Santa Fe Downtown Kiwanis Foundation was established from which to spend the money that Zazobra is raised, raises for the community has raised millions of dollars for this community for all the different uh, not-for-profits that benefit and, and uh, help children in our community. The money's raised from the burning of Will Schuster's Zobra directly benefit the community of Santa Fe in that they go toward children. Kiwanis International has a policy of which the Kiwanis Club of Santa Fe is a member, making a difference one child at a time. The burning of Will Schuster's Zobra enables a multitude of not-for-profits here in Santa Fe to benefit. Uh, for instance, last year's Zobra, uh, we netted about $36,000 specifically and allocated to the not-for-profits here in Santa Fe. Uh, were the organizations like Girls Inc, FACT, which is, stands for Fine Arts for Children and Teens, the Boys Club, the Girls Club, the Boy Scouts of America, the Girl Scouts of America, and uh, the Salvation Army's program for Souls for Little Souls, uh, Mervyn's Kidsbury, there's the Pinewood Derby that's hosted every year. All these are benefited from the burning of Zazobra and the proceeds we raise the night of the event. We also gave last year $26,000 from those proceeds to an ongoing college scholarship program for area high school graduating teens of which last year four were picked and two alternates were picked and these scholarships continue for four years 
So in any given year, Kiwanis could be sponsoring 16 to 18 kids of, uh, to go to college. We also raise money for our key clubs. The key clubs are very important to Kiwanis. Uh, the Kiwanis Club of Santa Fe actually sponsors two key clubs in the Santa Fe area, the Santa Fe High School Key Club and the Santa Fe Indian School Key Club. And they raise monies to do service projects and to go on their district and international trip. We just returned from Boston, Massachusetts this summer from our international trip where 4,500 students from all over the United States, Mexico, Canada, and the Bahamas, part of the Key Club International, learn service learning and citizenship. Uh, we have a worthy program in Glorietta called the Key Leader Program. And it's not exactly for Key Club. Any, any high school or uh, junior high student can go join and get learn uh, leadership skills, citizenship building, and how to do community service. And a lot of those uh, kids will go on to become key clubbers and such. So uh, that program was funded to the tune of almost $20,000 last year. So the proceeds of almost $90,000 went back into the community. The event itself uh, last year was in excess of 80 some thousand dollars to produce the event due to some Homeland Security issues and trying to get the security right. This year we hope to fund uh, the, the process of Zazobra to the tune of about $65,000. Um, I can tell you that there's a, we pay the fireworks company somewhere around $10,000 and the company has been doing the work for us for 50 years and will give us about a $26,000 show worth of fireworks. Uh, we always have to have the ever-present porta-potties <laughs> to the tune of almost $4,500. There's a sound company out there with stage and such at about $6,000, so it adds up pretty quickly. Um, but we try to minimize those costs and we bring in corporate sponsors to help us minimize those costs. And this year we have very worthy corporate sponsors that have, uh, some of the local businesses that have really opened up their pocketbooks to help this event and minimize the costs. And hopefully this year we can raise giving more than $90,000 into our different charities by these corporate sponsors helping us do this. It has been an honor and a privilege to become a Kiwanian and join the Kiwanis Club of Santa Fe and then to be sitting here 17 years after doing so, uh, be the event producer for Will Schuster's Zobra, something so richly uh, a part of our community and this culture, bringing it all together in such a reverent celebration like Las Fiestas de Santa Fe and La Conquistadora and uh, a capital city, the oldest capital city in the United States. Uh, to be involved in something this unique and uh, to be a part of the money that it raises to have such a good cause come from it um, often makes me think of all the members that join and give of their volunteer time and their service. Uh, there are many like me that we're, we're Kiwanians here and we're not the paid help, we're not the vendors that come and pay for the sound or pay for the food or the bottled waters. We're all volunteers here doing our best to perpetuate this amazing tradition of Will Schuster's is over and raise money and we bring with us our families and the generations that have been here on these stairs sitting here taking photos I was going through a book the other day and you know Schuster was sitting here and all his his entourage uh, so proud of what they had done in the 50s you know he invented this in 1924 and went through 26 and he had a heart attack in 1950 and a stroke in the same year and he lived 15 more years to continue this tradition and, and then have the foresight to give it to the Qantas Club of Santa Fe to perpetuate this, this amazing thing. So um, I'm very proud to be a part of this and uh, thank you for listening to this. So Zobra is put together in uh, four distinct pieces in the warehouse where we build it. Right next to me here is the head component. His eyes are pizza pans that have some little special tricks going on. This year the ignition source will be through the eyes. Fairly simple. The body is laying on its back right now. A common myth about Zozobra is that he's hung from his head. That's not the case. Zozobra is hung from his body. There's a distinct spine and cable system that actually holds him into place. The arms are attached here so that they can articulate and the entire load of the body is carried by the spine. He ends up being a solid structure from the belly up. However, the body and the dress below rolls up almost like a croissant, wherein all the stuffing is placed into the poultry netting. This year our stuffed paper happens to be something that came from the school systems of the Santa Fe Public Schools 
And then he's covered with a dress of muslin and hog ringed or shoat rings to staple him to our wire work that makes his dress and his body. The arms are being constructed here. As you can see, it's a poultry netting system with, uh, actually this is stucco gauge wire. And uh, Matthew Horowitz here, one of our apprentices, is uh, actually hog ringing the, the wire. Garson Salas back here is uh, cutting some of the pieces that he's gonna need to do that. And over here you can see uh, Justin Mayrant, another apprentice who is painting the fingernails on the hands of the arms. Uh, Jeff Duran is behind him, assisting him. The arms over the years have become more complicated and more articulated, and this year we've gone to even more extremes to have the fingers look more realistic. We chose the colors this year, uh, especially this orange nail polish that's on his fingernails so that they would contrast nicely with his blue bow tie and buttons. Uh, sometimes we try to coordinate some of our colors and uh, this is our attempt this year to do so. At this stage, the Zobra is near his completion. He's five days away from his demise. As you can see, all the colors and the bow ties and parts are on him. This is the culmination of many hours that started back in uh, July when all the woodwork was cut in our studio and then put in here in the warehouse in the last two weeks where we've added all these kinds of parts in here. Um, I'd love to be able to tell you the man hours put into this. They number in the thousands. Uh, we are close to putting him onto the truck that transports him to the, to the park on the day of the event. It will take about 25 to 30 people to lift this body and then get it through a small door and onto a flatbed trailer. The head itself will be picked up by about five different people and then gingerly put up onto the truck. The arms are easy. Two people can carry the very lightweight arms out. And we'll get him to the park where he'll be flamed and burned. We don't have that much time to I'd like to introduce Zoe Chavez. If you're not standing, it's okay because you're stuck in the bottom of your stuff, but uh, I'd like everybody stand to stand there so they don't and kick uh, put your hand over your heart. I'd like to introduce Zoe Chavez. She's going to lead us in the national anthem.
a distinct that was a distinct honor to have her do that for us. Thanks again, Joey. Hi, I'm here with Zoe Chavez, who uh, gave us the honor this evening of singing the national anthem, a beautiful rendition. Uh, Zoe, I'd like to ask you how you came to be involved with Zazobra, and particu particularly this evening, uh, for the creation of the Zazobra. Okay. Well, um, my mom actually called uh, Ray Valdez and um, just asked him if I could sing the national anthem. So he said, sure, you can audition, so. And what other kind of singing do you do? Classical, I like, um, I like uh, Charlotte Church, Josh Robin. Um, uh, Those are wonderful inspirations yes. for someone like you, certainly. Will you be singing next week at the Zazobra event as well? Yes. Mm -hmm. Terrific. And will you be doing the anthem there as well? Yes. Oh, well, we look forward to hearing that. That is going to be amazing. Are you nervous? Um, a little bit. Mm -hmm. a I'm little sure bit. you'll do great. And I just want to add, we are standing in front of the head of Zobra in the making. Uh, it's really an amazing thing to watch all of this come to creation uh, a week before the Zobra event. Uh, hundreds of volunteers come together and create the Zazobra here uh, at the rodeo grounds. Uh, Zoe, what do you think about all this tonight? This is amazing. This is really something to be a part of. Have you ever seen anything like it? Um, no, no. <laughs> it's really a one of a kind event. Yes, it is. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Now I want to introduce who is going to give us a real quick speech real quick on how she won the title of Rodeo de Santa Fe Junior Princess 2007. So if you could give your attention to Christina. Feet, 
It's the altitude that makes us so crazy and so interesting, but it's really our attitude. Thank you, Christina. That was great. Hi, we're meeting today with Christina Iannucci and her dad, Rick. And Christina has the honor of holding the title of uh, Miss Junior Princess Rodeo Santa Fe. And she spoke to us today. Uh, we are at the event of the building of Zazobra. And she uh, spoke to us about her poem that was her entry, uh, part of her entry for the honor of uh, Junior Princess Rodeo Santa Fe. So I'm gonna turn the mic over to you. I'd like you to tell me a little bit about the inspiration for your writing about Zazobra and how Zazobra has made you feel over the years. Um, well, for my uh, speech, you have to do a series of events an honor to win the title as I did for Junior Princess Rodeo de Santa Fe. And for one of the events was a speech and fashion show. And your uh, speech has to be on your county or your state, and I choose to do it on my county. And I was thinking, and we were thinking, and I thought, well, what's the most unique thing about my county that I can do that would be perfect for my speech? And I thought, well, the most uniquest thing that not a lot of people have is a zobra. I mean, it's not every day you get to burn something down to the ground, you know. So um, I, I wrote my speech, and after long nights up and many, many, many sheets of paper, we finally uh, got my one speech down, and that's the speech I performed here today. Well, it was very, very inspirational, and I think it really set the tone not only for the building of Zazobra tonight, but the kickoff for Fiesta, the actual event next week. Yeah. Now I see here one very proud father, so I'd like to ask him how's, how he's feeling at this very moment, uh, having such a lovely and articulate daughter. Well, obviously very proud, and uh, we're just very honored to be here with this um, wonderful crew of people that's so dedicated, Ray Valdez and his crew, um, just to be able to work alongside them. We're very, very proud to just be a small part of this. Well, thank you so much for participating in this event, and we certainly look forward to seeing you next week. Thank yeah, you. thank Good you. Day. Thank you very much. Uh, and we are here this evening with John and Beth Camerata, and uh, they are the heads of the Santa Fe Indian School Key Club. Uh, John, what, can you please tell us a bit about the Key Club? Uh, the Santa Fe Indian School Key Club um, was originally established in 1954. It's the first Native American Key Club in the country. Uh, we reestablished it in 1990, and we have right now about 45, 50 children, uh, high school students that are members of it. It's a high school service organization. Um, the students basically do community service here in Santa Fe and in the Native American communities. Um, they've attended a number of their international conventions. Uh, one of the things we're really proud about our club is that over the last 16 years, they've taken uh, 24 district awards and what was it, eight, nine international awards. And when they do their international awards, they're competing against 20, what was it, 45? 4,500 clubs from 22 countries, and they've taken first places numerous times for their community service projects, the documentation for doing more projects than any other club in the, I guess, in the world. And um, there are a bunch of hardworking, um, hardworking students. They really give a lot. They really care about people, and they not only give to the Santa Fe community, which they see as their community, but also their native communities. And I'd like to say that most of our students are. Um, on free or reduced lunch, all of our students are free or reduced lunch students, which means that they live at the poverty level or below poverty level. And really, they're the kids who should be recipients of a lot of service, and instead they're giving service. And I think that says a lot about our kids. 
And uh, John? Uh, John, you were telling me earlier this evening that uh, uh, the uh, Key Club has been working here at Frizz and Zobra for how many years? Uh, this is our 16th year in, in working uh, Stuffing and Zobra. We work on the field. Uh, it's one of their major fundraising projects. They sell refreshments and stuff on the field in conjunction with Kiwanis. And the money that they earn on the field and, and from their fundraising all goes into community service projects. They don't use any of the money themselves. It goes right back into helping other people. And they do projects like they go to daycares and, and head starts. They read to children. They, they purchase books. They even We have one group that actually writes books and, and produces them and, and reads them to the children. They, um, they do things with Big Brothers, Big Sisters here in Santa Fe. In the past, we've done a number of projects with uh, La Luce Shelter and a number of other organizations here. So it's, it's really interesting because the, the students have learned through their projects here some of the things that they can bring back to their communities and help there and vice versa. So it's, it's a real good exchange. And another thing we have done in the past is we've joined it up with other high schools. Uh, we've done things with Santa Fe High School Key Club and students from Santa Fe Preparatory School and um, done the bigger projects that we didn't have enough members to handle. And so we've also done projects with uh, kid bringing together high schoolers from all over who normally wouldn't get together any other way. Now, do the uh, students look forward to working at Zazobra each year? <laughs> they look forward to working at everything each year. <laughs> um, a number of our students, a majority of our students are dorm students, they're boarding students. So this gives them an outlet to get off campus, to, to get into the communities, to interact more, to meet people from the communities. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's a real interesting uh, mix. I mean, they, they look forward to everything and anything. No project is too big or small. Nothing is too clean or dirty to do. It's let's go and get it done and let's have some fun. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Beth? Um, just come to Zozobra, buy lots of Cokes and munchies, and we really appreciate your support. Thank you. I'd like to add something. I'd just like to thank the, the Santa Fe Kiwanis Club for all their support over the years because, you know, not only do they support us with, with providing us opportunities and stuff, but they also provide us with funding for things that pay for things that our kids can't pay for themselves. And it's really helped. And I'd also like to take the time to thank the administration at the Indian School for giving us permission to do these projects and to, to get out in the community because without the support of the administration, without the support of the Kiwanis, these kids wouldn't be able to do these things and wouldn't be able to give back. And, it's good to see people, you know, giving them that kind of opportunity. All right, well, thank you both very much, and we'll see you on September 7th at Zizobra. Okay, thank you. Hello, we are really at the grassroots level here, the building of Zozobra. And I have with me tonight what we call the burn guys. Okay, these are got the guys who are going to light the match that will burn Zozobra next Thursday, September 7th. But tonight we're doing a practice run, a practice fireworks session. Can you tell me a little bit about what's going to happen in just a few minutes? Sure. What we've been trying to do for a couple of years is to get a new idea and actually have spinners inside of the eyes. And the problem with that is that since the Zobra's eyes move, there's some torque that comes off of the actual firework spinning. And so we've actually had to design a cage that actually can hold it in and still give you the, the look of an eye. So tonight we're going to test to whether or not that cage will inhibit the firework from working the, the correct way. That's really fascinating. I would, never would have known how much goes into this evening. Can you elaborate a little bit more? Well, uh, it's always changing with the fireworks. We've, uh, I've been with the uh, club for about 40 years now and uh, with Zozobra. And uh, so our fireworks show changes every year a little bit. Uh, we try to uh, design it to enhance the excitement of the burning of Zozobra. Fantastic. Well, I'm sure this year's event will be successful like every other year. Can I please get your names once more? Yeah, my name is Ray Sandoval. And Ray, are you a volunteer with us? I'm uh, a Kiwanis member. I started when I was six years old, and this is my 26th year. 
another dedicated Kiwanis members. These guys are amazing. And you're? Um, Bill Lashwa, and I'm a Kiwanis member also. Okay. Yeah, 45 years in Kiwanis. Terrific. There's a lot of longevity in this room tonight. So we look forward to seeing you next week, and thanks so much. Thank you. Good night.